laughers. I hope everyone is doing well out there today. I do apologize. I've been on somewhat of a hiatus for the last couple of weeks. Well, first, my school had spring break, so I was able to go to Texas on a trip. I really enjoyed myself. And then second, I had to take the MPRE right after spring break. So I took the MPRE a couple of weeks ago. If you do not know what the MPRE is, please watch my video about it. It's somewhere floating around here where I discuss the MPRE. And I will give word of advice about when to take the MPRE. If you are a rising 3L, which means you will be a 3L, you're currently a 2L, and you will be a 3L um, in the beginning of, of August of next year or the next academic year, take the MPRE in August before the start of your third year of law school. It will just make your life so much easier. Since we have about 30 days left, I mean, it's crazy. I will graduate in about 30 days from law school. Thank goodness, I'm so excited about it. And for you all that are also graduating, congrats, a round of applause to all of you because we worked so hard. Law school is really, really difficult, but we persevered and went through it. So big ups to all of us that are graduating class of 2022. And then we were also like going to law school during a pandemic. I mean, I tell people all the time, I spent half of my law school academic career remote and the other half I was in person. But to talk about the overwhelmingness that we are all about to run into and some of us for the final time or second to final time, because we do have the bar that we have to prepare for. Um, let's talk about office hours, and why they're beneficial, how you use them and just go over that. I've been wanting to talk about office hours for a very long time because office hours were the one thing that actually helped me get through my first year of law school, like building that relationship with my professors, like going in there, asking them questions. That's what helped me. So if you are in law school or if you want to go to law school, if you're thinking about it, the one thing that you should know is that we only have one final exam per class. So we go all 13 weeks or however many weeks your, your particular semester or course is, you go that entire time and you take one final at the end and whatever you receive on that final, that is the grade for your class. So a lot of law professors do not give midterms. If they do give midterms, they probably aren't weighted as much because most of it is really based on that final exam. So you have one shot to get it right. It is a lot of pressure, but if you do office hours or partake of office hours, however you wanna explain that, then you will be off to a better start. Normally, you know, I like to come prepare. I don't have my note cards, but my outline is over there. So basically, office hours are where you are able to talk to your professor and you're able to ask your professor questions about the material that you're learning. So if you are really confused about a concept in civil procedure, you don't see how it's working or a negligence throws you off, then you are able to go to your professor, have one-on-one -on -one time with them and they can explain it to you and how do you find your professor's office hours or how do you know when your professor is available you check your syllabus on your syllabus all of my professors so far have had their office hours where they are available a couple of days a week and they have specific times i know pre-pandemic you were able to just walk in just because it was like they're in their office during that time you just walk in ask your questions but now you may have to make an appointment so check your professor's syllabus to see how your professor does office hours when they structure them or the best way for you to reach out to them i know some of my professors now they want an email where we actually schedule an appointment with them so that's how you find out about when your office hours are so there are pros and cons to office hours the real con to office hours is that they are time consuming. So as a 1L, you are also looking for jobs for summer placement of your first summer of law school. Um, you're also trying to stay abreast of all the readings and all the materials that you have to do. 1L is just so much reading because those core classes are just substantively heavy because there's a lot of information there. And then on top of that, you need to worry about your mental health. You need to like eat, sleep, possibly work out, do things that are stress relieving for you, things that help you get through the day. And you now need to find time to meet with your professor 
because there's a concept that you don't understand. So a lot of people look at office hours. I know a lot of my mentees, when they were in their undergrads, they really didn't take advantage of visiting their professor or building a relationship, like a professional relationship with their professor because they're just like, oh, I get it. Yeah, undergrad, you do get it. It's a lot easier. But in law school, you don't know whether you're going or you're coming. You may think that you understand a concept, but when you have to apply it to a fact pattern that you've never heard of or thought about, you may not know the answer or you may not understand the principles as well as you thought you did. So that's why you have office hours as a way to go and test your knowledge to see where you are. And so with everything happening, it does take time out of your schedule to go and meet with the professor on their schedule or schedule that you come up with just to make sure that you understand. But I look at office hours very similar to like the lumberjack who's hacking away at trees. And for all you people who are against like tree cutting, forgive me, I'm not trying to say anything crazy. But the example of is like a lumberjack needs to sharpen their axe, but they're just hacking away at this tree. They're working twice and thrice as hard to be able to chop down this tree. Well, all they need to do is just sharpen the axe and their job will be a lot easier. So look at office hours as sharpening the ax because either way it go, you have to chop down the tree, which would be your exam. Your 1L professors will help you with recommendations and getting jobs. Like a lot of my, my legal writing professor and my 1L torch professors, like I can use them as like references because I built that relationship professional relationship with them by just going to office hours and you know just like showing interest in like wanting to learn more and wanting to know what I don't know which is the whole point of going which leads into the next point of like the best way to use office hours so I had a mentee one time she came to me and she's just like how do I know what I don't know like I think I know it but how do I know if I don't know it and so I was like well yes you know that makes sense I know when I was a 1L and still, even as a 3L, like, in evidence, I'm just like, I don't even know how to phrase a question. Like, do I know English to even structure this into a, like, I can't verbalize what I'm trying to say, like, in regards to what I don't know. But it's okay, because here is what you do in order to overcome that. Number one, the first thing you can do is, if you don't know what to ask, use the office hour to explain what you know to your professor. So an example would be like, hi, professor so-and-so, here's what I'm understanding. I'm going to verbalize these concepts to you. Let me know where I'm wrong. Like here is how I look at torts. Here is how I see negligence. Here is how I look at civil procedure. This is how, in my mind, this is how I understand this particular crime. Or in property law, it seems like it's very similar to this real world application. If you go like that, your professors can like let you know whether you're on the right track or whether you're off the track and they can get you back on the track. So the second way is to go to office hours using hypotheticals. And I spoke about hypotheticals earlier, and those are just like examples of fictitious situations, fake situations where people are like in crazy like legal situations. And you're using that to provide an example of how a legal principle or a concept would be used based on some sort of real world made up imaginary application. So you can go to your professor, you can be like, well, I mean, if A and B did this, and then C came along and this happened, what would it mean for this? This is how I see it. In a sense, you're verbalizing what you think the concepts are, but you're also using an example as an application method with it to make sure you understand it. Third option, go as a group. My one all year, like, we would be five, six deep. Like, hey, you're waiting to go in, let's just all go in together. And then you study together. And the reason why going to office hours as a group makes a lot of sense, A, is easier on the professor, but B, more importantly, is that if you and your friends go, your friend may understand something that you're still having trouble with. I mean, in civil procedure, it was me and two other girls. We were always teaching each other what we thought because we were always, one of us was always strong in one part of civil procedure and the rest of us were kind of weak. And so whoever was strong in this would teach it to the other three. And so that's how we were able to teach ourselves civil procedure and go as a group it makes it easier and then you all will just be able just to learn from each other to be able to help each other out so another thing you can do when you're in office hours is to write out a sample answer yes write out a couple of paragraphs write a page your professor may read what you wrote or they may ask you 
to read what you wrote to them. A lot of them, they just, they've been teaching their subjects for so long. They can hear when you're going through the woods and you really need to be on this clear cut path. And other professors, they will read the work and say, you know, here, this is where you were trailing off going into the woods when the path is this way. Uh, write out the answers. That may take time, but at least you'll know before you get to the final where you are, which is the most important thing. And then finally, show your work. So the one thing about law school is that your normal way of learning will be challenged and you will learn different ways. So for example, I'm normally an auditory learner. So if I hear something over and over and over and over again, I understand it. But for civil procedure, that just wasn't working. I was just like, I don't get how it works. Like I'm hearing it, but it's not really like clicking. And so with civil procedure, I needed to draw a diagram. Like I, there was a timeline. That's like when I really realized I was like, oh, for me to understand this class, I don't need to just listen over and over and over or just read out loud my outline and read out loud my outline. Some people may use diagrams, flashcards, flow charts. They may even take index cards. I know I did this for criminal law. I printed out all of the elements of the crimes and I put them on flashcards and I would just go through the flashcards hours on hours just to make sure that I was able to memorize the crimes. For some people, they may need to create a written outline and just read their outline over and over and over. And some people just need to hear lectures that you can find online. Um, you can find them on Barbary as a 1L. I'm not like endorsed or sponsored by them in any way, but they do have a lot of the 1L courses there where you can just listen to them over and over and over. And that's what I did. Like I did that for all my classes. Like I would just play those professors over and over because I'm an auditory learner. So I need to hear the information in order for me to get it. So show your work, your professors, that's what they're paid for. I mean, that's what they're paid for. That's what they do. A lot of them love teaching the law. They love what they teach. So they will be happy to make sure like their goal is to help you understand so that you can just move on like no professor wants to fail the student like that's not what they want to do and if you prepare and you go to office hours you will be like ahead of the curve like you may not get the grade that you want but at least you don't have to worry about failing so see your professors and also too another cool part about office hours is that if you are struggling in class your professors can give you resources they can suggest outlines they can suggest supplements they can suggest things that will help get you to where you need to go but it's kind of like there's this saying a closed mouth don't get fed basically if you don't let your professors know that you don't know or that you need help there's no way they can help you so open your mouth speak get fed pass the class and just move on so i think that's it for this video on office hours. So um, I, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Good luck. We only have like four weeks left. Um, finals are coming up. So make sure you stay hydrated. Make sure you do things that are really good for your mental health. Go work out. Play with your animals. Do what you need to do to make sure that you stay sane. I've gotten into diamond painting. Love it. If you don't know what it is, Google it. Check it out. Maybe we could like diamond paint together. It's pretty cool. But Otherwise, I hope everyone stays well, stay safe, and enjoy the rest of your semester. Bye!